Hi there, I'm Vienno and uh, this is my 19th video tutorial on D3 and in this video I'll show you yet another layout uh, in D3 and that is the tree map layout that we're witnessing right here and the tree map layout is uh, one of the hierarchical layouts um, and what that means is we use it to visualize uh, hierarchical data and in this case I just reused uh, the mydata.json file that I created for another vi another video and as you can see the structure of this file is uh, we have our root, our root node here and uh, then we have three children uh, to that root node and two of those children have children themselves so we have an we have a um, hierarchical structure of our data is what I'm trying to say uh, so um, mm, as you can see we're only showing we're not showing all the objects in our data we're only showing the leaf nodes that is the the, the nodes or the objects without children you can you can do this in in different ways but that's what I chose to do so well, let me show you how to well this it should be clear what this is right yeah, let's just continue and uh, start drawing our uh, tree map. So, as usual, we start by loading up our data. So, my data. Dot JSON function data. All right, and then to create our tree map, we just, as with all the other layouts, we just say d3.layout and then the name of the layout and we can set the size I'll just make it the same size as our canvas and then using the nodes method where we are defining where our data is coming from so uh, from the data variable here that we're, we're loading with our uh, JSON um, command here and I want to show you the data so that it's clear what what um, what objects the tree map layout returns. So let's refresh this and inspect. You can see that we are returned with an array of nine objects, each for well one for each object in our original data. And um, but as you can see here, we're only re we are only displaying six um, rectangles, and that is like I said that. Uh, in this case, I'm only showing the leaf nodes, uh, the nodes without children. But anyways, for each of these um, returned objects, we returned with uh, the value for each, which is um, stored in our, our data. We're also returned with the name of, of that object, but the important uh, properties here are um, the x and y and dx and dy properties and what these refer to is these are computed by the layout so the x and y properties describe the starting point from the point from which where each rectangle is drawn so that would be the the top left corner um, for each for each uh, rectangle and then the dx and dy properties references the extent of, of the rectangle. So the dx property would be for this rectangle, uh, this, um, this point right here, and the dy would be the point right here, or yeah, this line here. Uh, I hope that, hope that makes sense. It's not that complicated, actually. Um, so let's use those properties to draw our rectangles we would um, we can begin by um, binding our data to our document and um, creating a G element for each of our nodes so the data would then come from the tree map variable and then enter and append or actually we can do do it like that so we have a, a class for each um, G element so attribute class would be cell 
Okay, and now we can append our rectangles to these uh, G elements. And that. So we, there are a number of properties that we need to define for, for rectangles in general, uh, in SVG, right? You remember that we need to specify the X and Y position, and then the width, and also the height. And each of these will be functions, and uh, a function of our data, and. Yeah, I just like I showed you, we each of these objects have x and y and dx and dy uh, properties, and we'll just supply these. We'll just make all these properties functions of those properties that the tree map layout um, gives us. So we'll say return dx for the x position, and then return dy for y, and so on. Whoops. And for the width, that would be the dx uh, property, and the height would be the dy. Okay, so let's uh, save this and refresh. And we just have this blob, um, a big black rectangle. And that's because we're not separating, we're not giving them different colors or any stroke or anything at all they're all black but uh, okay let's start by we could we could um, use a color scale that d3 provides us with so we'll say d3 scale at category and d3 has a number of these you can just look them up in the uh, uh, documentation but if we say category 10 we're turned with uh, this is a function that uh, provides us with 10 uh, a scale of 10 colors uh, so we could say fill and make that a function of our data and uh, if we if we wanted to okay so huh, if we take a look at at the at the finished layout here you can see that we are actually just using three different colors and these show that these three elements belong together these two belong together and this one is um, in a separate group and what that is based on is if we return to our data these three have the same color these two have the same color and this has yet another color so we are defining the color based on the parent of each object and to accomplish that we'll just say function return and then color and then we want to base the color on the parent of each um, each object and the name of that parent so if we save now and return to this no why not cannot read property name of undefined okay color would be the D parent name oh this may be because all objects doesn't don't have parents so if we make this a um, if we use a an, an if statement so we're saying if it has children then return null so no color else return yeah what we just uh, said so refresh okay so now it works we're just showing we're not displaying the um, the uh, objects objects that have children okay so um, that's all good the next thing would be to append some text to our rectangles just to display the name of that of, of each rectangle uh, so we'll say x will be a function and here we'll return first 
the DX property, which is the, um, the left border, and then we'll add um, the extent of that uh, of our data. So it it will be to the text will be positioned to at the right border, right? But then we'll divide this by two, so it's um, displayed in the middle middle of each rectangle, and we'll do the same for the y. Uh, position so we'll say return dy plus d dy divided by two and um, yeah let's take a look at this okay oh and um, of course we need to do to set the text and the text will be a function which will return the name of each object. So let's save and refresh. Okay. Uh, good, 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 good. But we could also say here that we only want to return the names of the leaf nodes. So if it has children, return null, else return the name. Um, yeah and now okay as you can see we need to to separate the rectangles within each group and uh, we can do that just by adding a stroke so we'll say stroke will be let's say white uh, there are other ways of doing this but yeah that's an easy way Okay, so we have our uh, distance or space between them, but they're a little bit, they're a bit uh, too much to the right, the uh, the labels to each rectangle. So we'll say at the here, we'll say text anchor, which is by default start, but we'll say middle and say refresh. Okay, looking good. So not very complicated, it's all based on the properties that we returned with that the layout returns and uh, yeah I think you'll get the hang of it if you just take a close look at what I did in this video uh, that would be the last layout I think that we'll cover uh, at least for a while and uh, I'll see you next time